All right, this morning, I'd like to just um, share on one of the things that I believe that helps us to become a winner. Who wants to be a winner? Anybody here? Oh, well, I am. I am a winner, <laughs> and I want to be a winner. And so uh, I'm just going to share a little bit about that, and, and uh, I'll come to the point in a minute. If we look in the Bible, we begin to realise there are certain things in there that are very, very important for us to get a hold of. And the first one I want to refer to is Haggai, chapter 2 and verse 9. And it talks about the former rain and the latter rain. It talks about the former rain coming to the building. And we know it's not talking about a, a building that's made of concrete or anything like that. It's talking about the, the people of God. And so we've got the former rain and the latter rain. Uh, and then the Bible's very clear on this. And then if you go over to Joel a little bit further, over in Joel chapter 2, and most of us are very familiar with this because uh, it's in our heart, it says there that the Lord will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Right? The Lord will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. That's what it talks about here. So the latter glory, that means the latter glory shall be greater than the former glory. The latter glory shall be greater than the former glory. That means that the Lord's miracles are going to be far greater than the former. Yep. All right, you're with me this morning, just laying a bit of a foundation. So if we understand what God is doing, and, and I just felt uh, back in November how that the Lord would got upon his white horse and he's heading towards this planet, I really felt that in the Holy Ghost. And we find that there's change in the atmosphere that's happening, not just here, but worldwide. There's a revival happening and breaking out in different places at the moment that uh, we're not... What did you mention this morning? South Africa, was it? Or? South America. South America. There's a revival happening in South America at the moment that's just suddenly began to happen. Right? Suddenly. And there's a lot of suddenlies in the Word of God. And so what I want us to, to, to be reminded uh, that... The, the Lord's miracles are more powerful in these days than they were in the former. Right? 2.5 million people were delivered from Egypt. Come to the Red Sea. Open the Red Sea. They walk through. See, the, the glory of this latter house is going to be much greater than that of the former. Right? Now, if you go to Joel again in chapter 2, it says here, uh, and it talks about... I will restore the days that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and all of those things were used very much uh, in, in, in understanding what has happened to the people of God and people's lives. God is on the move, and if the glory of the latter is going to be much greater than the former, I am believing and we are believing for nothing less yeah. nothing less that's where we are today and we are the generation i believe that will understand the glory of the latter <laughs> the former and the latter rain that tells us the word that come together and so we need to have not just wisdom of knowing these particular things, but we need to have understanding of where we're up to and what's happening at this particular time. And so point number one, which we've finally got to, <laughs> in four things that we need to become a winner is this. We need to rebuild our concept of God. If you want to be a winner, you've got to have the right concept of God. Right? We talked about the first time love was mentioned was when Moses and Isaac went up there. A covenant love. We've got to understand so many things in that sense. But this morning, I want to say where we're up to now. Because this is my experience and what I've learned. We uh, are believing for nothing less, but the point is we need to see that we need to rebuild our concept of God. Yeah. Verse 25. It says in Joel chapter 2, I will restore the years. I will restore. Where I believe the church is at today, 
and I'm seeing it happening worldwide, is that God is in the restoration business. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know whether there's anybody here that hasn't had or felt like you've been in situations where you've been stabbed in the back and been portrayed and, you know, you could go back to your childhood and your mum and dad let you down or your school teacher let you down or, you know, this person said this, said that and this person said that and, you know, and, you know, all these things can happen to you. Some people are sitting here today because their spouse let them down or their business has gone, you know, where it shouldn't have gone and, you know, things and financially been in, in uh, you know, situations, I want to tell you that if you understand God, he's in the restoration business today. God will restore. In the last year, I have found that I've met people and felt a restoration that I knew 40 years ago. I found that all of a sudden something's happening in the atmosphere that if we're going to be winners, we need to have a mindset. We need to have an understanding that our God is a restoration God. Do you know that he can restore anything? He can restore anything. You know, that's the type of God that we serve. And if you go to Kings chapter 8, you'll find there's a story there that's very, very interesting. Now, this is to do with the Shunammite woman. Who remembers the Shunammite woman? She's the one that was, you know, there was a great drought and, and she's the one that prepared a, a, a house for the prophet and uh, also her little boy died and he was raised up again and, and here she was, um, you know, in this drought, seven years doubt, drought. Matter of fact, Holy Ghost, there's somebody in this meeting this morning, around about 22 years ago, Something happened. Something happened that was devastating. Something happened. Well, I want to tell you this morning, God wants to restore. God wants to restore the damage that was done. There are others here, you know, maybe seven years, maybe 50 years. But we are in the day today, mark my words, that God is restoring. God is restoring the damage. God, we're in the process of really understanding the grace of God, the mercy of God, and, and God is restoring because the glory of the latter is going to be much greater than that of the former. We are in that day. So we need to rebuild our concept of God. So here was this Shunammite woman, and if you know the story, and, and I guess we've all walked through different situations at different times. We've been let down, we've been stabbed in the, fat, in the back, and, and, you know, and all these type of things and have all happened to us. Every one of us have had those experiences. But I like what Timothy says, I fought the fight of faith, and I'm still standing today because I've learned to fight the fight of faith. And so here was this Shunammite woman, and she, after seven years, Elisha, the prophet, um, told her it was time for her to go back to her land. And when she got back there, she found out that somebody else was living in her house, on her land. And they were not going to give it up. This is where we need to understand how God works. But it so happens when she got back there, that they decide they were not going to give it up and she couldn't move back into a house, couldn't move back into a land. She, in other words, she had lost everything. And so it so happens that she said, well, I'm going to go and see the king. Now, when she went to see the king, Gehazi, who was Elisha's servant, he was there talking to the king all about the miracles that Elisha had done. The king had asked him to come and do that. And he told the king about how that God had raised up this Shunammite's woman, uh, son, and, and how that, you know, the miracles that Elisha had done. And all of a sudden, the woman walks in. Isn't that amazing? Right? Isn't that amazing? Right at the very time, and then Gehazi, you can read it, Gehazi says to, to the king, this is the woman that Elisha 
was able to pray for her son and he was healed. And you know what the king said? He said, I want the people that have got your house right to hand it back to you, but not only to do that, but to give you all the fruit of the land for the last seven years since you left there. Isn't that a miracle? Isn't that a miracle? Oh, it's just coincidence that she happened to walk in just when, the, when Gehazi, Gehazi was sharing about what all the miracles that Elisha had done. No, 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 no. It's like the Pope saying that the Quran and the Bible are the same. That is a lie. No, no, no. <laughs> Amen. No, it, it was not a coincidence. It was God restoring back to her everything that she had lost plus, plus, plus. Oh, hallelujah. Are you glad we're in this day? <laughs> everything that the devil has stolen from you, God wants to restore it back again. Oh, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I tell you, oh, that makes me excited. Oh, that, that does something in my spirit because I know that the glory of this land is going to be much greater than the former. Therefore, everything the devil has stolen from me, God's going to restore back to me. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm experiencing that in my day that I live now. I am so excited about this generation and the way that we live and the timing of God that God is restoring things back to the church that they have lost over the years and people have got upset with the church. They've been hurt by the church. They've been hurt by pastors. They've been hurt by people that they look to. You know, the whole box and dice that the devil has tried to bring against us, right, God is in the restoration business. He can restore what you have lost. Amen? Oh, he can, he can do all things to him that believeth. And so what I'm saying here is that we need to be a group of people that need to have a restoration mentality. If you want to be a winner, you have to have a restoration mentality today. In the day that we live, we need to have that restoration mentality. Can I say it again? God wants us to have a restoration mentality. Do you believe what the Word says? Amen? God's going to... Man, there's people that have lost loved ones. They've lost different things. Well, God wants to restore the, the, the this damage that that's, whatever it was has done. Right? God is in the restoration business. There are people that are sitting in this meeting this morning that God has put into their life, you know, and you know, there's things like, you know, so much inside of us that we'll bust if we don't get it out somewhere along the line, amen? God is restoring. God's restoring revelation. God's restoring uh, the things that have hurt us. And, and so what I'm saying here, if we're going to be winners, we need to rebuild our concept of God and have a restoration mentality, are you with me this morning? Amen. We're not going to live in the past. If you live in all the hurts, they become a mountain. If you live back there of all the things that have happened to you, they become a mountain. But I want to tell you, we need to have a restoration mentality. Oh, glory to God. The glory of the latter is going to be much greater than the former. God's going to do something that is beyond what we can even dream. I tell you what, all the Lord's miracles that we know of and everything, what's going to happen in this latter day are much more powerful than there. The glory of the latter is much greater than the former. Are you with me this morning? So we need to have that restoration mentality. You know that God always does things better than what they were before. I could tell you story after story in the Word of God where things turn out better. Hallelujah. So let's develop that mentality. Amen. Are you with me? of restoration, of the ability that God has, the God that we serve, is a God of restoration. And so we pick up the story here of, of Gehazi uh, when he was sharing with the king all the miracles that Elisha had done, which were great, which were twice as many as what Elijah had done, right? Seven years 
um, drought uh, was twice as long as what the one Elijah had, three years or whatever it was. And so, you know, he did twice as many miracles. Well, I want to tell you, <laughs> the glory of the latter, <laughs> the glory of the latter, that all the things that we know and understand in the former are all going to come together, it says in Joel, and fall together. And it does say, I think, there by memory in one month. So suddenly, it can all happen. Just like that. Just like this lady. All right. And so we're here. We need that restoration mentality. And God restored back to the Shunammite woman all the land plus all the fruit for the last seven years. And so there was a great miracle that, that, that happened there. Amen. So it was all restored back to us. And we need to understand. All right, just a couple of scriptures in closing this morning. Our time has beat us out. And uh, Isaiah chapter 61. So if you have your Bibles, I want to just show you a couple of things here. We need to have the restoration mentality. You know why I'm a winner? Because I have a restoration mentality. Amen? You know why you can be a winner? If you have a restoration mentality. Have a restoration mentality. Isaiah chapter 61. Okay, yeah, that's it. Instead of your shame, listen to this. Instead of your shame, there shall be double portion. I don't know anybody here has ever suffered shame or, you know, whatever. <laughs> double portion. I tell you what, I'm, I'm in for the double portion. Amen. I don't know about you, but I believe that God is restoring today and I'm in for the double portion. Poor old Job, he went through a lot and got his double portion, but, uh, you know, here we are. Instead of dishonour, they shall rejoice in their lot. That's what my the King James says something different. All right? So here we have what God wants to do. Then there's another one in Zechariah. Okay, Zechariah chapter 7, chapter 9. And here is the key. If you want a double portion, have a restoration mentality. It says this in verse 12. Return all of you to your stronghold. Who's our stronghold? The Lord Jesus. Oh, prisoners of hope. Do you know that we are prisoners of hope? Now it says, return to the stronghold. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Double. I'm into the double. <laughs> I'm into the, the restoration of God. God is doing something today in the area that we live, and he is a restoring unto us double for all the trouble. Can we all say together double for all the trouble? Double for all the trouble. <laughs> so the glory of this latter house, is going to be much greater than that of the former. I believe that we are entering into the time and seasons of God where suddenly God's going to pour out his spirit in such a way that we'll be absolutely amazed, absolutely astounded at what God's going to do. Amen? Absolutely astounded because we're in the day of double for all the trouble, right? And so, but we do know the seasons and the times and seasons and understand them, understanding. And that's why I want to bring a little bit of understanding today that we need to have a mentality of restoration if we're going to be winners in the day that we live in now. A mentality of restoration. I just know that God is restoring. He's restoring things back. He's turning the hearts of the children to the fathers. And don't get me going on fathers, but, you know, God's doing something that is beyond what we can even ask or think. He is working on this planet. He is headed towards this planet. Things have changed in the atmosphere. Things are happening now, right in the very day that we are living in. There are things that are happening that, you know, it, it's, it's just it's my mind-boggling when you look at that side of it. We get caught in our own little world and don't realize what God's doing in the earth. It is amazing what God is doing in the earth. So this morning, double for all the trouble.
Are you going to take a hold of that this morning and develop a mentality that is a restoration mentality? And God's in the restoration business, isn't he? Amen? He certainly is. He's in the restoration business and he's restoring the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm and, and everything like that. So I want to encourage you this morning that this restoration God will bring you out better than before. He will bring you out better than before. The restoration, you know, mentality is so important. And I want to basically leave that with you this morning. If you don't remember anything else, remember a restoration mentality that God wants to bring double for all of the trouble.